good afternoon guys welcome back into my channel so in this lab we're going to configure we're going to create a sql ser server on a virtual machine with azure so first of all we got to check this article you, you can see here it says that the article been updated on the 14th of this month so SQL Server on Azure VM. So this article provides an overview of SQL Server on, on Azure Virtual Machine VM on the Windows platform. So it talks here if you are new to SQL Server on Azure VM, check out the SQL Server on Azure VM overview video, which is this video here, which the first deployment option we're going to talk about for Azure SQL is SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines, which is going to provide the promise of the cloud and allow you to have OS control. Now, there are many reasons why we see customers moving towards SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machine. They might be having hardware that has contract that's expiring. They might have SQL Server on 2008 or 2008 R2. They might be wanting to move to the cloud as fast as possible, but not wanting to make big application changes, or you know, common times we see people are leveraging third-party applications that require access to that OS. Now, SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machine is going to be a great solution because it's really just SQL Server. So you can get the version of the SQL Server that you need, you can get the OS that you want, and you can also get all the features that are available in SQL Server. In addition, by moving to an Azure Virtual Machine, we're going to give you things like free extended security updates for SQL Server 2008. And we can allow you to set up things like automated backups and point in time restore. Now, a customer I really like to talk about related to this is Allscripts, because they were able to move over 600 on prem VMs to Azure in a matter of weeks using Azure Site Recovery. And an interesting thing here is that they really took a phased approach. So after they moved to SQL Server and Azure Virtual Machine, they started evaluating some of their workloads for our past service Azure SQL Managed Instance. Now, in this series, we're not going to spend a ton of time on SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines because it's really just SQL Server. However, there are a few considerations that we just wanted to touch on um, for you as you, as you go through this process. So in this series, as Anna mentioned, we're not going to go into all the depths of Azure Virtual Machine because the focus is going to be more on the differences and similarities between managed instance and database to your SQL Server environment. But are, there are some important points that you need to know because you are deploying SQL Server in the Azure infrastructure. So first of all, when you're going to deploy a virtual machine, just like you're used to doing something at say Hyper-V or VMware, you're deploying these things now in our data centers. So we're going to give you interfaces to do that. First of all, you're going to be able to deploy SQL Server through what we call the Azure Marketplace, which I'd mentioned before through the ecosystem, pre-installed versions of SQL Server, both on Windows and Linux available to you. Or you can just install it yourself. You can install the OS of the Marketplace and then bring your media up, install SQL Server inside the VM environment in Azure. Now, Anna mentioned about all scripts, so Azure Migrate's a great option because you can literally lift and shift the entire virtual machine VHD from both VMware or Hyper-V right into Azure and just start running away and operating with the virtual machine. Now, when you use the marketplace, we use something behind the scenes called the resource provider to register your virtual machine with us. So you can take advantage of licensing and addition flexibility. You get things like automated backups and security updates because we know that you're running SQL Server in this Azure environment. And in fact, through that Azure portal, you can see all the different resources of your Azure virtual machines with SQL installed along with Azure SQL database and managed instance. If you don't have SQL server installed in the marketplace and you install it yourself, we do have a process for you to use the resource provider to register your SQL server with us. Now, performance is an issue no matter where you go. And in your data center, when you're setting up SQL server with virtual machines, you establish the performance parameters. You're using Azure now, we've got a lot of great options for you. You're gonna pick virtual machine sizes. And so we're gonna have things like memory or storage optimized sizes that you can choose from to pick different memory options, CPU options and storage, give the maximum performance for SQL Server. Your database and your log, those concepts you're used to doing, you're still gonna be storing those things on disks in Azure. And we have something called premium storage managed disks 
They're gonna give you the best flexibility and the best performance for your workloads. In fact, we did some interesting stuff. We have free read caching from our Azure Blob Storage, which is really gonna maximize your performance, and you just have to use storage. You don't have to do any kind of special option there. Uh, you do have to kind of configure Azure Storage that way, but it's not something extra you gotta pay for. It just comes with Azure Storage. TempDB is gonna be stored on a local drive with fast SSD storage, and if you need really low latency needs, we do have something called ultra disks that you can configure to put your transaction log or your database in those environments. Now you have to set up networking somehow because remember you're running your VMs inside the Azure ecosystem and infrastructure. That's okay, we have virtual network environments for you to integrate not only your virtual machine with other Azure resources, but even with your on-premises assets, could be your application, your tools, whatever you need to do. And Anna mentioned about some of the benefits of using the Azure infrastructure, even with VMs. We talked about automated backups and security. Well, you're gonna hear more in this series about something called advanced data security. And in preview right now, you can even integrate advanced data security services in Azure to your virtual machine. Well, high availability has gotta be important to you, of course. And normally you're used to configuring your SQL server with things like failover instances, and even have backups of your databases and your VMs. Well, Azure through the ecosystem has built-in HA with their virtual machines, built-in DR using Azure Storage with multiple copies of your database files just by using Azure Storage. We integrate with services like Azure Backup. We support things like file snapshot backups. And you wanna be able to do things like failover cluster instance and availability groups. We have that all set up for you so you can integrate those technologies within the Azure ecosystem. And for example, SQL Server on Linux has just come out the last few years. We will even integrate HADR solutions with uh, Linux distributions like Red Hat to support theme things like fencing and stone protocols. So we've got a wide range of solutions for you. Again, it's just SQL Server running in a VM. You're gonna RDP in this thing and it's just gonna feel like a SQL Server in a VM. But you wanna make sure that that VM is deployed, configured, set up for performance, set up for availability, using the Azure infrastructure, just like you might do in your data center. So virtual machines can be a great option. It could be your fastest option that you have uh, to move to the cloud. And again, there are advantages of running SQL Server in Azure because of the infrastructure uh, options we provide you. But just remember, in the end, this is the full range of SQL Server choices, the SQL Server additions, and SQL Server features that are running in Azure. Hope to see you in the next video. So, all right, guys. So basically, this giving you a bird's eye view of everything that we will do here to, to perform that. So there's no need to even go over these anymore since Azure is already explained everything to you in detail. So let's just go ahead and, and go to the Azure portal and start creating a SQL Server. So let's see if we can refresh here. All right, so let's go here and refresh. Now, first thing first, you would have to go here and type in Azure SQL, because if you just type in SQL, you will get a bunch of SQL option. You would have SQL database, SQL server. Yeah, SQL server is basically what we need and SQL elastic pools and SQL manager instance. So I need Azure SQL and here, they will display all these options. Now, in my case, so like the like it was said, so this is the option that we need. We're gonna perform simulation on those two options here too, but as we, I'm sorry, was what, what we're concerned of in this demo today. So it says that best for migrations and application requiring Operating system level access, so lift and shift ready. So if you click here, you see it says that pick an image to deploy a single SQL virtual machine when high availability checkbox is unchecked or pick an image to deploy multiple SQL virtual machine with a high availability group when high availability checkbox is selected. So the ability to create the uh, the availability group through the Azure portal is currently in preview. So I can pick the free, it's the free one, so this one here, and I can hit create. Now with that being here, 
If you have a resource group, you could always attach it. I mean, click here and attach it to it. I don't have one yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and just create one. So I could call mine RG1 as always. Um, resource group one, and I can name this um lift and shift. Say one. And I could put this on East US. Say I put this on East US. Availability option. I can put this for whatever, like no infrastructure redundancy require, or you could pick anyone you'd like availability zone, um, virtual machine skill sets, which is VMSS and uh, availability set, but I don't need that. I'm just, um, using this to perform my demo. Um, but as for you, when you're doing that, you can pick, choose and refuse any option that best suits your need. Now, let me go ahead and give it a username. I could call this call and I can give it a, I mean, a password. And let me confirm my password. And now I can click next. Now there's nothing that, that needs to change here on the disk. I can leave everything I have here on the networking side as default with the exception, and they actually delete public IP and the NIC when the VM is deleted. Yes, I want that. Now for management side, there's nothing that I need to change. For monitoring side, I need to just disable this because I don't want the diagnostic book book to be um to be I mean to enable so it would slow in my machine when I wanted to start. Now nothing I need here. Now when I come here, I can choose the SQL connectivity as public. I don't need no private and I can um, perform the port number as 1401 instead of the, the one that was there by default. I can enable the SQL authentication. It's gonna ask me to type this. So it's already here by default. If I go down here, there's not much that needs to change here. I can just review and create. Let's see if it's past the validation. So it's past it. So let's cross our finger and create. So deployment is in progress. Just give it some time. Okay, so again, just taking some time and it's gonna be now guys, as a deployment is in progress, um you may wonder that like SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machine is enable you to use full version of SQL Server in the cloud without having to manage any on-premises on -premises hardware. So SQL Server Virtual Machine VMS also simplifies license cost when you pay as you go. So Azure Virtual Machine run in many different geographic region around the world. Now, if you wonder what is the difference between Azure SQL and Azure SQL, I mean, Azure SQL and Azure SQL Server on Azure VM. So Azure SQL Server 
versus Azure SQL database or a better fit for application with standard security requirements that can be used built in Azure security feature. So SQL Server works better for application that call that, I mean, for application that call for special security requirements, including specific agent on the OS level. Now, the other thing again is that if you wonder what is the purpose of the Azure SQL Server, well, Azure SQL Database Serverless simplifies performance management and helps developers build apps faster and more efficiently with compute resources that automatically scale based on the workload demand. Now, you may wonder which Azure Virtual Machine is better for SQL Server. I would say it's the EBDS version 5 series VM. It offers the best price performance for SQL Server workloads running on Azure Virtual Machine, and we strongly recommend them for most of your production SQL Server workloads. Since the, the deployment is still in progress, I might as well just go over a couple of the other questions again. So if you wonder, is the SQL Server free in Azure? I would say you are not charged for the Azure SQL database included if you are I mean, if your Azure free account, unless you, you, you exceed the free service limit. So to, I mean, to we mean within the limit, use the Azure portal to track and monitor your free services usage. Now, the other question that you may have again, what is the difference between SQL Server and SQL Database? Well, SQL, is a query language, while SQL Server is a database management system. So SQL is a query language for working with relational database. With SQL Server, while SQL Server is a proprietary software that performs SQL queries. So the deployment is still in progress. So let's just go ahead and, and see if we can answer a couple of questions that you may have. Why do I need Microsoft SQL Server? Well, Microsoft SQL Server is ideal for storing all the desired information in relational database, as well as to manage such data without complications. Thanks to a visual interface and the option and tool it has. This is Vero especially for websites that have the option of registering users log to log in. So you may wonder, how do you use the SQL Server database in Azure? So the steps is just simple. As you see, the way that I do it here, that's the steps. Now, you can install SQL Server in Azure. So how do you access it to set that up? Now, you may wonder, what is the cheapest way to host SQL Server in Azure? In Azure Virtual Machine, you can have the SQL Enterprise Edition, SQL Standard Edition, and SQL Web Edition. The enterprise edition is the most expensive and it includes several features not include in the standard or web edition. So the web edition is the cheapest option, okay? Now, does Azure require SQL? Azure SQL database is based on the latest st stable version of the Microsoft SQL Server database engine. You can use advanced query processing features such as high performance in memory technologies and intelligence query processing. 
Hmm. Sorry, it takes long before it finish. So is SQL Server actually a server? Well, Microsoft SQL Server is a relational database management system, RDBMS. Its primary function is to store and retrieve data requested by other applications. It supports various transaction processing business intelligence and analytic applications, usually in corporate IT environment. Hmm. I'm sorry, guys, it takes longer than expected. So now you may wonder, how does SQL Server work? SQL Server follows a table structure based on rules, allowing connection of data and function while maintaining the data security and consistency. So checks in the rela relational model of the server work to ensure that database transactions are processed consistently. I mean, yeah, consistently. So is MySQL server a database? MySQL and Microsoft SQL Server, MS, MSSQL, are two of the most popular enterprise database system in the world. MySQL is an open source relational database management system, which is RDM, RDBMS and MSSQL Server is an RDB, how RDBMS developed by Microsoft. So the deployment is still in progress. So now question, what is the advantage of using SQL Server? So the advantage I would say it's faster, efficient query processing. SQL works with, uh, with an efficient speed. No need for coding skills. There is no need for large and complex code lines for data extraction. It's portable, a standardized language, interactive language, multiple data view, internet usage, larger, I mean, large user community. So these are the advantages of using SQL Server. Now, you may wonder what is the benefit of SQL Server? Well, SQL functions are, I mean, as a method for retrieving data from within a database. And this popular method can, I mean, can interface with multiple programs and system. SQL is popular language for businesses, including business administration, since it provides a simple method for accessing and manipulating stored data. Oh my gosh, still in progress. Okay, so let's go over a couple of the questions again. Now, why do people use SQL Server? SQL Server helps control information stored in database, allowing users to retrieve the specific data they're looking for when they need it. While, while it's a simple programming language, SQL is very powerful. Now, how do I hmm, access my SQL database in Azure? It's easy, I speak about that already. What is the maximum storage for Azure SQL Server? Maximum size of each data file is eight terabyte. Use at least two data file for database larger than eight terabyte. So what type of storage does Azure use for SQL Server? So only that MDF, that IDF, and that N, the F file can be stored in Azure storage by using the SQL Server data file in Azure feature. 
So what is SQL Server in simple words? So SQL Server is a database server by Microsoft. The Microsoft Relational Database Management System is a software product, uh, is a software product, I'm sorry, um, my accent is a software product with primarily stores a retrieve and retrieve data requested by other applications. This application may run on the same or different computer. Oh my gosh, this is still processing. So I just have one more left. So bear with me, please, guys. I apologize for that. Um, now, you may wonder which one is better, MySQL or MySQL Server? So in, term, in terms of data security, the SQL Server is much more secure than my SQL Server. In SQL, external processes like third-party app cannot access or manipulate the data directly. While in my SQL, one can easily manipulate or modify the database files during runtime using binaries. So it's good to know. Now, what is the pros and cons with my, I mean, on, on SQL Server? So database specialists, so the pros is the is career opportunity free developer edition with all enterprise futures, thriving online community, plenty of online documentation. The cons is complex performances, tuning future, no naive support for source control. My God. Moment is still in progress. So guys, it takes forever these, um... okay. So now what's the other question that we may answer again? Like what are the disadvantage of a SQL server always on? So you cannot safeguard system database master model and the MSDB from instance and database level failure always on does not support adding them to the availability groups. Always on does not synchronize SQL server login length, servers and agent jobs to the secondary database. Now you may wonder why SQL uses in the real life SQL is used in everyday life by some of the biggest companies like Netflix, LinkedIn, Amazon, Flipkart, Instagram, Uber for data analytics and performance analysis. So even small companies and startup employees, SQL of or similar purpose, SQL is a great tool for interacting with databases and fetching viral data. Um, my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is taking forever. So I wonder if I should just I wonder if I should just end this video and retrieve back when, when this is done. Because the deployment is in progress, it takes forever. Wonder if it's not even over 15 minutes by now. Oh, uh, you may wonder what is the lifespan of a SQL server? 
So each version of SQL Server is backed by a minimum of 10 years support, which includes five years in mainstream support and five years in extended support. So mainstream support includes functional performance, scalability, and security update. Um, oh God, it takes forever. Oh man. Oh, man. Now, does SQL Server use a lot of memory? SQL Server in default configuration uses as much RAM as the operating system is willing to, to give. So it is normal that memory usage is huge. What we should check first is the is there any hardware fault in resource monitor? In this window, we can see every time the OS needs to swap memory in and out between the memory and disk. Now, what happened when SQL Server went out of memory? SQL Server does not move, I mean, does not move data from memory, the buffer pool into a temp database. In that way, it uses at least recently used caching strategy in general. So if there is memory pressure and new data needs to be pulled in memory, SQL Server will kick out the the LRU data from the buffer pool, I mean pool to accommodate the new data. So by the way, guys, I might as well just end this video right there. I will do another video to test the SQL database, I mean the SQL server that I'm building. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.